Hi, I'm George, and we'll be using filters and blend modes to create this pop art poster. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. And to really learn how to use Photoshop elements, take a look at my complete training course, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. We'll be using this photograph as the basis for the pop art picture, but we'll start off with a brand new file. Go up here to File, come down to New, and Blank File. Now in here, I want to have this as a square picture, so I'll start off with 8 by 8 at a resolution of 300, and choose OK. And that gives us a square picture, as you can see right there. OK, we now need to bring this picture in. You can download this picture from my website. There's a link for that in the description. I already have it downloaded, so I'll just drag this over. Now, if you don't have floating windows working for you, just go up here to Edit, come down to Preferences, and right here on General, and make sure that this checkbox is checked, Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode. Normally, it's not checked. Just go ahead and check that, and then you can make your documents floating. Just grab the top tab there and pull it down. You can then float the window. The nice thing about this is you can just grab the background and drag it over onto your new file, and there it is. Okay, let's go ahead and just get that out of the way. So it's that easy to bring these in. Now we need to have the basic file divided up into four pieces, into quadrants. So I'll hide that for a moment. Come back to our background, and then dragging in from the rulers, I'll drag a guide light in right to the center. It should snap right to center. There it is. Do the same thing from the top and drag it down. It should snap right to center. Now if you don't have those, Go up to View, make sure that Guise is shown right here, and on Snap To, make sure that Guise is checked, and you'll also want to have your rulers showing as well. So Rulers, Guides, and Snap To Guides should all be checked. Okay, let's bring our picture back up again. Go back over to that layer, and you can then position this where you want it, and I think right about here looks pretty good. You can adjust the size if you want to. That's up to you on what size you want to have the girl in your picture. I'll put it right about like that. Now I need to get rid of this stuff out here. We'll do that with a layer mask on this layer. So go up to the rectangular marquee tool, come outside this upper left hand corner and drag down. You should see your marquee right here and that should snap right to those guidelines. If it doesn't, just give it a second try. Just pull it down, it should snap right to those guidelines. There it is. And then just hit that button right there. This is the add layer mask button and that just hides everything else. Okay, now we need to make copies of this layer. So right where the name is, right click and duplicate layer. Choose OK. We now have two copies of that, the top one selected. Just grab that and pull that over here to the right. Put it right there. It should snap right into position. Same thing, right click, duplicate layer, choose OK. Pull that straight down. Right there. One more time, right click, duplicate layer, Choose OK and then pull that one straight over. That will give us four copies of that one image. Let's now merge all of this stuff onto one new layer. Make sure that you're on that top layer and using a special keyboard shortcut, it's hold down the Control and the Shift and the Alt key and then tap on the E key once and that merges all these layers up into a new layer. You can now go ahead and just hide all of those things. We're done with those layers. We now have this layer as our new layer. At this point, we're ready to put some colors in on top of this. So let's make a new layer above that. There we go. Go back to the rectangular marquee tool and do the same thing as grab a marquee upper left hand corner. There we go. And then go up to window and come down and open up the color swatches right there. In your color swatches you have two sets of basic colors. Up here are your bright colors. These are your RGB colors and down here these are your CMYK colors. We'll use the CMYK set. They're just a little bit duller than these and it works out better for this. So here's our foreground color right now. It's that black. Come over here and click on this one right there. Click on that. That changes your foreground color over to that magenta. Now grab the paint bucket and just click inside the selection and it fills that one square area with that magenta color. Okay, back to the marquee tool. Let's now do the upper right hand side. Click out here someplace and drag this in right down to those guidelines. It should snap right to the guidelines. And then using the tool here, using our color swatches, click on the cyan right there. Back to the paint bucket and click inside. 
Okay, same thing. Grab the rectangular marquee. Let's do the bottom right hand side. Just drag that up this time. Again, it should snap to those guidelines. Back over to your swatches. This time you want to have that yellow right there. Click on that. Back to the paint bucket. Click inside. There's the yellow. And last one, again, that rectangular marquee. Click outside and drag up to those guidelines. There it is. Back to the swatches and then go over here and we're going to be grabbing the green right there. Back to your paint bucket, click inside, and there's your green. We can now go ahead and just do select and deselect. So there's our basic color layer. We can now close the swatches. Then we're done with the swatches. We also can hide those guidelines, go up to view and uncheck guides. That's our first set in here, photos and color set. Let's now make a second set where it says layer two. Click on that, right click and duplicate layer, choose OK. Now go down over here to your color picker, bottom left hand side of your panel in here, the tools panel. Click on that icon right there and set the colors back to their default settings. Now we're going to apply a filter onto this and convert this into a high contrast black and white. Go up to filter, come down to filter gallery. And in here, you want to be in the sketch section right there and then down here at Torn Edges. Now at Torn Edges, come here to the Image Balance and you can move this back and forth until you find a nice pleasing image. You want to have a nice amount of detail in there. If you go too far one way, it's going to go too light. Too far other side, it goes too dark. So start off in the middle and then just move it around just a little bit until you find a nice setting for that one that you like. I think around here about 20 is pretty good on that. On the smoothness, Bring it clear up to the top and you'll see a spot where it just goes darker right there. Just back it off from that just a notch so you don't lose that darkness. That makes the blacks nice and that keeps your detail in there. On the contrast, you can darken your blacks down by going to the left a little bit in here. If you go too far, it does that. You don't want to be down here because it gets too blocky. So I like pushing this up until I get some nice lightness in the picture and just before it begins to go kind of snowy. In this picture here, it's about 19 or 20. It'll vary depending upon your picture, so you need to just go back and forth a little bit on that to get a nice solid black in here, but no darker than that solid black. Okay, there's our nice high contrast picture. Go ahead and click on OK. There we go. We can now hide this background. We're done with that merged layer right there. We can now, on this one, copy this, make a duplicate of this, right click where the name is, and choose Duplicate Layer and OK. Drag this layer above your color layer. This now becomes your top layer. Now come down here to this color layer, right click, duplicate that layer, choose OK, and then drag that one above. Now for these two layers, we're going to be inverting both of these two layers. So in our top layer here, the color layer, go up to filter, come down to adjustments and invert, and then hide that, and then come down to the faces layer here, same thing, Filter, come down to Adjustments, and Invert. Makes it a negative version of that. So we have positive set and a negative set. Now all we need to do is to blend all these together. On the top one up here, your top colors, we're going to be setting this one to Darken. So go up here and choose Darken. Come down one layer. This is our Inverted Faces layer. Go up to where it says Normal. Come down to Color Burn. And then come down to the next layer right down here. And we're going to blend this positive color into the positive faces. And that's the blend modes again right here. And come down to lighten. And that gives us this multicolor effect. I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit here. Let's go ahead and fit screen. Looks a bit better. Now the only problem with all of this is that this one square down here is just too dark. We can adjust the colors on this one square very easily. Go up here to the top layer. And then on this layer above here, we'll be adding in an adjustment layer. Go up to layer. Come down to New Adjustment Layer and Hue Saturation right there. That little checkbox right there that says Use Previous Layer. Leave that unchecked and choose OK. And that gives us an adjustment layer that affects everything. If you pull the hue back and forth, notice I can change all of your colors in here. It's kind of fun to do if you want to. I'll leave this one at zero though. It's not what I'm trying to do this time. I want to have this only affect just this one square bottom right hand corner. Now we can do that with the layer mask over here. We need to mask out everything else and leave this part unmasked. So for that, let's first go up to View and let's show our guidelines again. There we go. Now go over here to the Rectangular Marquee Tool. Come down to the bottom right-hand corner just outside. Click there and drag up and make a selection. It should snap right to those guidelines. 
we now need to be able to put black in here and not this. So we're going to invert that selection. Go up to Select, come down to Inverse, and now just this area out here is selected. Okay, grab your paintbrush and then give yourself a pretty good size brush. That's pretty good, 528. Make sure you're on that layer mask, look for that light blue outline, you should already be there. And then just come in and paint on top. Now you won't see anything in here, but it's painting on the layer mask over there. So make sure you cover the whole thing. Just go back and forth like that a bunch of times. Make sure you go clear around the outside edges like that. And you should have a good solid black right around the outside and white in the bottom right hand side. Okay, once that's done, just go ahead and do deselect. Now, if I adjust my colors in here, it only affects that bottom right hand side. Okay, set that back to zero again. Where it says colorize, click on that. And now we'll change the hue in here and let's make that more of a blue tone. Now the one that I used was 188. Bring the saturation up, makes it a lot brighter. I go clear to the right hand side here on the saturation at 100. And then bring the overall lightness down just a little bit so it's not too much out of the range of the other ones. I brought it down just to negative six. And there we go, I'll go ahead and close that. And that's it, let's just hide those guides again. And I'll float the picture up like that. And let's just stretch this out just a little bit here. Go to the zoom tool and I'll zoom in a little bit right there. And there we go. There's our pop art picture using some filters and some color layers and then this blend modes to give us this interesting multicolored pop art effect. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. And take a look at my complete training course. There's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, and I'll see you next time.